Is there an inevitability to the devolution of power to local authorities and a case for the 100% retention of business rates? Well, some believe that funding changes are a case of back to the future, to a time when councils routinely played a role in utilities and infrastructure, tackling the big issues within society like housing and welfare. In our two-part series, Local Heroes, reporter John Briggs investigates the reinvigoration of the role of municipal authorities as place shapers. By 2020, the combined current and capital spending by UK local government will be lower than at any time since 1948. We are in uncharted waters. In fact, you might as well take everything you know about local government and throw it away. It's been widely characterised as sink or swim localism. And by that, authorities either sink or they swim. And so, in a sense, it is uncharted territory and it needs a new approach. My concern is, in stark reality, I think there will be some councils that will be treading water, just trying to survive. And I do worry that some actually will not be able to find a way of raising business rates and council tax in order to actually address the funding gap. That funding gap became very clear back in 2010 with what was called the perfect storm. The combination of cuts in vital public services against a backdrop of rising unemployment and an ageing population very much in need of them. The suspicion was that local government was seen as low-hanging financial fruit. And while local councils saw government grants slashed by almost 30%, Whitehall was trimming its own budgets by a mere 8%. The solution was for local government to start thinking differently. These councils and local councils are increasingly going to play one of the leading roles in regenerating local communities and moving communities forward. But one of the problems is making the local electorate aware of these initiatives. When asked if they could remember seeing something that their council tax might have been spent on, the response isn't encouraging. Not a clue. Huh? Not a clue. Uh, can't remember. Oh, I don't know. Just keeping the streets clean. A lot of people just make the whole street dirty, so they're just keeping the streets clean. They spend money on that. Not got a clue. Um, not, not really, no. They don't spend money on anything, they spend it on themselves. One way of ensuring that your voters know what you're doing is to get them to do it for you. Local parks come under the heading of livability services. In other words, they could be in the firing line when budgets are tight. Leicester City Council helps to keep its parks running by using volunteers. We've got them on parks and open space on a whole raft of projects. So we've got them people who do sort of general stuff in terms of litter picking their local community area. Then we've got people involved in community projects uh, such as conservation uh, areas, nature areas, normal horticultural tasks in parks, but then also people who would go on the water, like the riverside here. There is a danger, though, that councils can become too reliant on volunteers, isn't there? We, we're careful that we don't actually take over the core cool work. And what the volunteers do is they, they add benefit and extra um, to the actual service we offer. In Leicester, we, we've seen a, a, a big increase in trend in terms of volunteering. It's just under 70,000 volunteer hours last year. To that, to that point, we've actually put more resources into actually managing the process, and we've got a volunteer manager soon to be appointed. Everybody like a big pot of money. It's just not there, and it, that pot of money we do get is reducing year on year. Um, and this is where volunteers are, you know, are, are, are sort of holding their hands up and coming in and saying, yes, we can help. Hopefully it'll grow with, a, uh, with a, a partnership of both the public wanting to look after their street scene, uh, wanting to own their streets and, and telling people not to drop litter. And it's a joint partnership where we can all work together and make sure that Leicester keeps clean. There are those who say that this is a return to local government as it was originally designed to work. But for Stephen Griggs, there's simply no previous reference for this situation. don't like the notion of let's go back to what local authorities were because it implies that we're going back to some 1970s style bureaucratic service delivery. That went a long time ago. What we need to do is recognise the role and move away from the dominant narrative of local authorities, which has been this enabling a council, and move towards what's been called a more ensuring council, which takes its responsibility for stewardship and actually has a much more active engagement and active view of how it manages and works with local communities.